Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Real Talk with Rick podcast. I'm Rick Getcho. I'm the city manager for the city of Eaton Prairie. And I was pleased on this episode of Real Talk with Rick to have um, Jasmine Ellingson with the city of Eden Prairie. She is our aquatics supervisor here in the city, and she manages all things related to water, uh, not only at our community center, but also at our city beaches and water bodies. And so Jasmine does an excellent job of giving us some background on what her position's like, how aquatics works in Eden Prairie, and also she gives us some insight into who really should have been playing at the Super Bowl halftime show instead of Maroon 5, who also would happen to be the person that she would want to play her in her life's story when the movie does come out. So here is my talk with Jasmine Ellingson. Thank you for coming in. You're welcome. All Excited right. to be here. Great, great. You are a recreation supervisor for aquatics at our community center. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Um, so my position oversees all of our lifeguarding staff, all of our water safety instructor staff and aides, and then um, we see oversee the pool at Oak Point for swimming lessons, uh, the four different pools at the community center, and then our beaches at Round Lake and Lake Riley during the summer months. So this isn't just a community center. I should not have said the community center. <laughs> That's there it's a, a lot. There's, scope of yeah, there's a lot at the community <laughs> center, but we do. We have beaches. Mm-hmm. We yep. are actually. We were named like best beach town. One of the, uh, one think, of the best one beach of the towns. Best. Yep. That's it's right. True. That's because you oversee that. Obviously, the beaches in Eden Prairie. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. We'll, so we'll get to. Um, you know, I was thinking I had questions about the community center, but you, we're going to talk too about the beaches and and Oak Point. What. So you're, you're all aquatics all the time. Mm-hmm. Where did that interest come from? Well, when I was younger, um, I wanted to become a lifeguard because my biggest fear was drowning. Um, why my biggest fear is drowning is because when I was about five or six, um, we were on vacation with my grandma. And she actually went away from the pool for a little bit, and she came back, and all I had sticking out of the pool was my nose. Uh-oh. Um, so she had to do an emergency save and come and save me from the pool. <laughs> so that's how my kind of love for aquatics came about. Went into swimming lessons right after that, obviously, because my mother thought that'd be a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, after that, I became an instructor myself, a lifeguard myself, and that's how I got here. So do you, re- you were five, you said? Yeah, about five or six. Do you remember it? Um, I remember the the after, like being pulled out and my grandma f- completely freaking out. But I was fine. You were so okay I was with okay. it. Yeah, you, your head was above water. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my nose was sticking out still. I was still breathing at some point, I think. Okay, did your, did your mom give? <laughs> oh, my mother was not there. Which is probably a really good thing. But is it is it her mother or your dad's mother? My dad's mother. So did yeah. she get in trouble? Um, no, because I definitely went back to many lakes with her after. Oh, good. So okay. She was all allowed right. to bring me places still. So. It was all good. It was okay. Fine. Then, I'm okay. Then, all right. Well, it's well, you're here now because of that. <laughs> I am. You're I here am. now. So did, I got to thank my grandma for almost letting me drown. Actually. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Did, so you um, swimming lessons, lifeguard, and then did you say, where'd you grow up then? Were you a lifeguard where you grew up? Yes, yep. So I grew up um, on a farm just north of Albert Lee. So I ended up working at the Albert Lee Aquatic Center, and then I worked there as a lifeguard, a swim instructor, and then about two years after I started there, I became the manager of the outdoor uh, aquatic center there. What, roughly when would this have been? Oh, golly. Um, oh, you're pretty young. It's not that long ago. No. Uh, it would have been about 2009 to 2011. Okay. So I started there in 2005 or six. Okay, good. We want to kind of get that frame of reference because, I mean, we've had some people on recently that when they were probably learning how to swim, it was in the 50s and 1960s. So you're much younger than that. So this isn't that much long Much younger. Ago. Not that long ago. 
So was there anything? Well, obviously, you know, you've got the story and then the work and and Albert Lee. Mm -hmm. But um, but you did you went to school? What did you go to school and study then after that when you're out of high school? So I went to SMSU, which is Southwest Minnesota State University in Marshall. And I went there right away knowing um, that I wanted to work in social work. Uh, So I studied social work when I was there. I worked at an after school program at the middle school. But then I also worked at the Y beginning right away in 2007 when I started school as a freshman. Okay. And then worked at both places. And then after school, when you when you graduate? Yep. So I graduated in 2011, and it was kind of a fun story, right? I graduated May 7th, and I started as aquatic director May 2nd. So I technically had a job before I even had graduated. Okay. Um, That's so. how it should be. It's yeah. A good it deal. was. It was worked for me. (laughs) Um, And then I also was counseling. I did my internship at the middle school in Marshall. So then my first couple of years, I was also um, working as a counselor a couple days a week at the Marshall Middle School while I was an aquatic instructor at the Y. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, take, uh, share your path here. How do you end up getting to Eden Prairie? Because I think you came into the metro area, but maybe on the east side of the metro first? Yes, I was way over there. Um, So I left the Marshall Y in August of 2016, and I went up to the White Bear Y, so I worked for the Twin Cities YMCAs. Um, It was a great experience. I loved working up there. However, I was living in Edina at the time, your favorite city. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a really long drive, stressful drive at times, especially in the winter. Yeah. And so then I saw this position open up in Eden Prairie, and I applied. Awesome. And got this position in August of 2017. Wow! So it hasn't been it hasn't been two years yet. It Not fe- yet. It feels like you've been here several years. It does. Yeah, I feel like I've just always been here. That's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's a good thing. Did now with the why when you go from Marshall to White Bear Lake, is it like a applying for a totally new job or is it like a transferring or what's that yeah so um with the twin cities organization it's just a little bit different um the marshall y was an independent y so we could kind of uh, create our own programming have just a little bit more freedom um whereas in the twin cities it's a brand new everything you're kind of starting over and then they have your set programming for you um so you kind of just follow what's given to you okay this reminds me we had our last guest um, talked about living at the Y. Yeah. Um, but you you have no, there's no experience with the Ys that you work for where anyone's living there. No, no. no. <laughs> that's that's way back. Way when, back in that's the day. Way back in the day. <laughs> but I think there's some understanding of that, but you didn't you didn't have any um, Ys that you were working for where people live there. No. Okay. No. That, not that we know of. <laughs> right. So Eden Prairie, um, mm-hmm. you know, talk a little bit about uh, what what's like a typical week for you. How does it? Yeah. How does that? So um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, we always have our swimming lessons in the afternoon and evening time. On Tuesday, Thursdays, we have our adult lessons and then our Fit Kids Club, and then it kind of just depends um, what we have in the pool. We have quite a few different swim meets that happen as well. So we have um, out of our facility, we have the Fox Jet Swim Club, um, and they run a couple meets. Uh, we've had two this month for them, and then also the Eden Prairie High School Swim and Dive boys right now are in season, and we actually have their senior night tonight wow. as well. Wow. So let's break that down. So mm-hmm. you've got, there are general lessons that residents sign up for, children and adults, just through City of Eden Prairie, yep. you know, our program for lessons. Is it, does it fill, how do you break down kids and adults? Do you, do you get a lot of adults as well as kids? Is it both pretty full? We do, yes. Yeah. Um, our lessons are extremely popular, which is amazing to see. They're very uh, diverse lessons, which is really, which is even more fun because uh, swimming is a life long skill that everybody should have and should learn how to swim. Um, so very popular. They're mostly full. Um, and especially with our adult lessons, we offer about 10 spots per month, and they get filled very quickly, which okay. is awesome to see. It's fun to see adults learning a new skill. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the Fox Jets piece is that's just that's competitive swimming. That's mm-hmm. a club. Yep. And about how many, you talked about they have meets, like roughly how many like members do they have that you see when they use our pool, they... rent our pool? What? Good question. Their club runs right around 300 uh, swimmers 
And then depending upon the meat, they have different types of meat. So we can see as little as about 80 to 100 swimmers to um, we hosted their senior state for the uh, Minnesota last year. And there was roughly 600 to almost 700 swimmers that we saw throughout those four days. Okay. Mm -hmm. And high school too then. So the high school team is pretty active in Eden Prairie? Yes. Yep. So And they'll run three to four meets out of uh, per season out of the community center. The center. Are they pretty good, our high school They team? are. They're very good. They're okay. very fun to watch. Okay. Kelly Boston does a great job. <laughs> okay. Good. Shout out to Kelly Boston. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, talk a little bit about the beaches then in the summertime, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how does what is that like? So we have Round Lake, which is right across in the community center. Uh, we also have a splash pad up there uh, that's very busy, which is fun to see all the little kids wandering around. Um, so those hours are from 10 a.m. to 7, and then we have Lake Riley as well, which opens a little bit later. It's from 11 to 7. Um, the biggest difference between the two is that uh, Round Lake, we also have rentals there. So we rent out canoes, uh, youth kayaks, paddle boards, um, and then Lake Riley, we did that huge renovation out there. Um, so it's just a beautiful area yep. now to walk through, and there's a path and uh, just, just a great beach to be at. Yeah, no, that, that's awesome. It's an awesome upgrade. Mm -hmm. And then is it obviously a lot depends on the weather, and I know maybe it's Round Lake in the past. Sometimes there might be reasons we have to close the beach. Not all that often, but right. you have to deal – do you have to deal with, like, when when we do or don't close? And Yeah, so um, we'll close – there as least amount of times as we can yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um so the biggest thing is just with the weather if it's lightning or thundering we just have to take the precaution if it if we see a lightning strike or hear thunder it's 30 minutes after every single strike um and we again try to close pretty not often and then for the weather piece it does have to be 65 degrees for us to open if it's 64 below okay. um, we technically cannot open any of the beaches so. okay Last summer we did not have that problem often, but <laughs> yeah, I can't. W w last summer was pretty good. Wasn't it was, yeah, it, it was it was it a warm was a, one. It was a yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't close hardly at all. Too often. <laughs> no, that's good. When um, kind of the work you do, what are some of the um, biggest challenges for you? Are they like on when the meets are happening? Is that can be a lot of chaos and work, and or is it? Yeah, depending yeah. upon the meet, um, we work with some pretty, our again, our high school and our club teams are phenomenal to work with. They have such a good system. We have a good partnership with them. It makes everything just very smooth on our end. I think one of the hardest issues is staffing. Um, it's it's hard to find enough people. Okay. You know, in the summer, we need 100-plus lifeguards just to run everything that we oversee. And it, sometimes it becomes an issue, but we we always make it work. We have phenomenal staff. Um, our team's really, really good. good. Still mad at you for not uh, giving us the award for the holiday hoopla. The, the holiday, right, right. Still upset about it. You got so we had here at <laughs> at, at with the city. We had um, you know employees who wanted to decorate their work area in a festive mm -hmm. holiday manner. I was asked to be the judge, which is probably the first terrible mistake. judge, terrible first mistake that was made, <laughs> and and I did. I came over and I looked at what you guys did over in your area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You weren't there, but some of the I, I, I talked to some of the leads over there. They sold it well, good. But you um, came in second place to to Brenda over in in the park admin area, but. But, we'll remember um, that next year. Yeah. Actually, you might have <laughs> come in third. We did come in yeah. third. I was going to allow center, it, though. The, the art center. <laughs> the art center. In our heart, we came in first, you and everybody that. else was very, very below us, but yeah. that's fine. So do you think having you on this podcast makes up for that a little bit? It does. Okay. I think this is so. your way of saying I'm so yes. sorry. It is. <laughs> that that's you didn't exact, win. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So what what so lifeguards mm -hmm. you were a lifeguard so you know lifeguard. i mean it it so that so that's kind of a big deal in terms of what spring you hire up yep. and it's just a bunch of um, people do people come from all over a lot of eden prairie kids mainly i shouldn't say kids so i don't know maybe mm -hmm. we have a lot of adult lifeguards tell me kind of a little bit that. of both yeah okay. so um we're lucky again we partnership with the school a lot so they run uh, their lifeguard classes actually out of our pool and then we run at least two or three lifeguarding classes as well um, so some prereqs to be a lifeguard is you have to be able to swim 300 yards doing 
doing the front crawl or the brush stroke. Um, it has to be continuous, back and forth. And then you have to be able to get a brick, a 10-pound brick, which is kind of heavy for some. Okay. You have to be able to go down, pick it up um, anywhere from 7 feet to 10 feet. And then you have to swim back on your back with the brick. And then last thing you have to do Ooh. is tread water without your hands for two minutes. So those are your prereqs just to get into the lifeguard class. Okay. And then that lifeguard class is normally a three-day class, roughly about 24 to 28-hour class. And then um, a written test after and scenarios and skills all throughout. So it's pretty intense three days. Yeah. You're very tired by the end. Okay. And do you get, I mean, I think you get a lot of people coming back. Yeah. You know, year after year. Mm -hmm. Last year, I think we had... Uh, th at least I think it was 32 people come back and then this year for um, kids going to college we had 43 that left for college okay and then they came back a lot of them come back over the different breaks so spring break Christmas break okay that's so, good yeah we have a lot of retention which is really nice yeah that is that is good I so the time that I spend at the community center is not in the pool <laughs> I'm not um, I think my wife would say I tell her if I fell out of a boat I could swim to shore swim to the boat she doubts that sometimes but when I'm at the community center you know whether it's basketball or on the treadmill there are a lot of people that for a workout I oh, see yeah. I see that just swimming you mm -hmm. know for a workout not necessarily any part of any group or organization so yeah. we're i think since we did the big addition yes you know yeah. we're seeing i think i'm seeing a lot of swimmers there yeah absolutely um especially during from like 11 to 1 we have 16 different lanes between our lap pool and dive pool and if 11 to 12 of them aren't filled during that time it's very rare yeah so it's it's busy there's hardly ever a time that there's somebody not in the pools yeah and then um do you are you involved with the kind of zero depth area two and the more um, kid-friendly slides and some of that are you yeah yeah so, so we that. oversee um we have different in the morning we have top time hours from nine to noon um every day but mondays and wednesdays and then anybody ages five and under can bring their parents um to it and it's kind of just a little bit of a quieter time again having just the smaller ones there the younger children there with their parents and then we also have open swim hours which is open to everybody of all ages and that would be the time where all the fountains are on the slides are on diving boards a rock wall all of that gets used during that time good no it's a it's a great it's a great amenity it's awesome it is. yeah and one of the best things about our pools and how the setup is is that we have our competition pool and diving all on one side and then we have kind of a barrier wall in between and then we on the other side we have the rec pool um, which has again all of our open swim everything so we can be running these huge meets mm -hmm. and on the other side where you know our open swim is happening and the kids are there and the parents are there and they won't even know a swim meet's going on so it's just a phenomenal design that was that was done by the city that's good mm -hmm. did uh, so what's coming up I mean, are there some events planned this summer? What do you have coming yeah, up? Yeah, so tomorrow we have a really big swim meet for the actually the YMCA. Okay. Um, we're hosting the section one of their section meets, so it's five different teams coming to our pool. I think it's roughly around 300, 400 swimmers that we'll host. And then we have um, another meet for Fox Jets coming up in March 1st through 3rd. Huge meet for us as well. Okay. Um, and then in the summer months, we got a lot planned. Um, I'm kind of excited. We got a grant um, that's going to allow us to buy, they're called Wibbit Inflatables. So you guys will see them at the lake this summer, especially on the 4th. Wh It'll be a very wh good Wibbit? time. Wibbit. 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 Oh, yeah. What is that? The name of the product? The name of the product. Yep. Okay. The name of the company, I should say. Okay. So then there's these big inflatables. We have like a little slide that you can go off of um it'll be kind of like a climbing tower there's like different pads that you can jump on um there's like a walkway that you can walk through um so who's you you is like you like me you, yeah, okay maybe johnny up there <laughs> and johnny. johnny johnny can do it jay said jay lothammer yes uh, he said that he's going to do it as well so okay. on the fourth make sure we get pictures of we that. We will have our park and rec director <laughs> there on the 4th. That's that's perfect. So that's a big part of the 4th. Yep, that's a big part of the 4th. And then we'll have um, some of our rentals again. Hopefully we can get those out to Lake Riley as well. Just another experience out there. And then we'll have it hopefully a couple times in the pool um, just so people can see it in the community center. Um, an exciting thing that we're hoping to, again, offer this summer is our sensory swim. 
So with our sensory swim, it's we turn um, all the fountains off, we turn our music off, we have it just on the rec pool side. Um, the guards actually don't use any whistles either. Um, so it's for our different, uh, just a bunch of different people that come and we're just trying to be as inclusive in the community as possible. And so that's another exciting thing we're going to offer this summer. That no, is it, so have we done that before? Uh, we tried it last year. Okay. Yes. Yep. We did not get a a great following for it. So we're hoping just this year we can. Um, we're really working on more of our adaptive swimming and being more okay. inclusive to the community. We're going through um, different trainings, uh, hoping to go through different trainings. So um, we're working very closely with our um, inclusion support to make that happen for our community. So that so when I think about that, like what do you see in terms of your field happening, whether it's now, the next five years, ten years, in this the whole um that whole adaptive piece, mm-hmm. the um the sensory piece. What what else is what else? Because that's being you're kind of ahead of the game there. Mm-hmm. That's pretty neat. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, our goal is really, especially in the aquatics, is again swimming is such an essential skill to have. You need it's a life saving skill. Um, one of the nice things about the Red Cross curriculum is that we don't focus just on the strokes. We're also focusing on the safety components. So safety components of swimming would be your floats on your front, on your back, and then also treading water. So those are the things that we're kind of looking for. Um, especially with our adaptive programming we're going to hopefully be able to offer not only private lessons for adaptive but also group lessons and then in those group lessons we really want to take it a step further with how to make every single person safe in the water safe in the water around the water but then also educate the parents on how we can make sure that they can help all of the different children that we have in our program. So, so you'd say back when you were a lifeguard, going mm-hmm. back way, 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 way back. Like At least ba- 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. <laughs> Woo! Um, that the focus maybe wasn't on educating the parents and, and some of the life safety stuff. Was it just, hey, I'm going to teach you these are the strokes that you need to know? Yeah, and that's kind of changed a little bit. Yep, absolutely. And our goal is really just to start educating everyone. It takes mm-hmm. a whole group effort, it takes a family effort. Um, we really encourage even that, even though you are in our lessons right now, you should be coming to open swim. You should be bringing your children to open swim. Um, I like to compare swimming to reading. You should be reading every single day to retain and to you know continuously keep growing your knowledge of reading. Swimming is the exact same. If you only come twice a week for thirty minutes. Um, you lose the what you just learned. Um, so again, we really encourage parents to be there, help your kids, support your kids, and make sure um, that you are practicing as much as possible. Yeah, I mean you're right. It's kind of a lifelong thing. So hopefully, mm-hmm. um, you know, the trend is, it's you know, it's consistent people that are part of lessons and part of the the pool programs. It's not necessarily going to vastly increase, but there's no reason it would decrease. Right. Absolutely. And. Um, so maybe the last thing about the kind of pool situation, too, is um, you talked about Oak Point. So we have this relationship mm-hmm. with, with the school district. Yep. So we host over there our Saturday morning lessons from 9 to noon throughout the school year. And then we have uh, Monday through Thursday lessons there during the summer. So we run three sessions. So six weeks we are there Monday through Thursday um, for swimming lessons as well. Okay. Good. Yeah, I know we have. Some good partnerships, the high school, mm-hmm. the, the Oak Point pool. Uh, you know, it's a, it's important that kind of the whole community kind of gets behind. Yeah, absolutely. Aquatics. And it's, it's yeah. you know, everywhere we go, it's great support, great partnerships. It's very easy to work with everyone. Yeah. Fox, like I said, Fox Jets has been a big part of what we've done. They were a huge donor for why Correct. what we even have. Yeah, You absolutely. know, there right now is a result of their work. So, good. So, before I start... Um, you know talking about you personally a little <laughs> bit yeah is there anything any any of their last words about um eden prairie aquatics at all our biggest thing is that we're just continuously trying to grow um again swimming like i said a bunch of times is just so important uh we just want to continue to offer more and more programs and just be really inclusive in the community um, one thing that i forgot to mention we also do a women's swim um, so really great story with that is last year was the first year that we ever offered it um, we actually closed down our whole rec pool we put out uh, blackout curtains for it and then we had 20 different women um, of different cultures come in and swim 
And um, a great story from it is that we had a lady that was about 30, I think she said 34 years old, um, first day of the lesson, she came in and she was just so excited to be there, um, which we, we love. <laughs> you know, anybody that's excited yeah. to swim, we're excited to teach. Yeah. Uh, so, and she kind of got in the pool and was splashing around a little bit, and then she started just crying. And I, you know, pulled her aside and asked, is everything all right? Is it okay? And she's like, I'm just so excited to be here. This is the first time I've ever been in a pool. As So somebody wow. who's 34 yeah. years old and the first time being in a pool, it was just, it's a really impactful moment for not only myself, but for m- you know, the staff that were there, the whole team that was there, um, and others in the pool. So it was just so happy that we can provide that in Eden Prairie. It's a huge thing, and we want to, again, just continually getting better and grow and touch as many lives as we can through swimming. That's neat. That's really neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's good to hear. So, Jasmine, <laughs> ask a couple questions just to put you on the spot here. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> so you just won the lottery. I you did. just won the lot. You did. You did. Um, what are you going to do with all the money? I would definitely give my money away right away to my mom and my dad so they could buy a house um, for themselves because they've helped me out a lot and definitely would give it away to them. And then I suppose since I have three sisters, they'd have to all get some of it too, I guess. They get a little, they get <laughs> they a get little a bit bad. of it. All right. So <laughs> three sisters. Yeah. So you... you you mentioned before, I know the story, that your name is Jasmine, but there's some pattern here. There is. To the, yeah. Yes. So I have three older sisters. Um, they all start with a J, and then we all have seven letters in our name. So it's Jocelyn, Jennifer, Jessica, and Jasmine. This was well thought out in advance. It was. That is, yeah. <laughs> and what if there was ever a boy that came along? Do they have that? Um, they had that planned out in advance. Um, you know, I've never Jeremy, asked Jeremiah. <laughs> I'd have to think about the seven letters, but they stopped with me because I'm perfect. So at the <laughs> end, <laughs> right, I mean, right. they stopped at Jasmine. Absolutely. You just can't get any better. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I have three daughters, so I can you know kind of relate to someone that has you know. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Did you stop on the last one because she's perfect? Yes. I knew. Yes. It. See. Yes. That's how it goes. Absolutely. That's the youngest we know. Yes. Yes. No doubt about it. Um, some, if you, you, we, I've asked this in other podcasts as well, too. This is a good one. Um, you could create any rule you want, any rule <laughs> that everybody had to follow. What would that rule be? It would definitely be walk on the pool deck at all times. <laughs> all right. No very, running. <laughs> very job related. Very job related. So that's like the number one kind of instruction that is heard pretty continuously in in the pool oh yes okay and in target and in walmart i can't tell you how many times (laughs) there's been kids running around and somehow i may yell walk (laughs) yeah well that's just a habit it's program it's program (laughs) it is (laughs) so you personally something that maybe that you've done something Mm -hmm. that's unique to you that you've done that most people have not done I like to say that I um, have raced barrels before with my horse. So I used to be a barrel racer, used to show in 4-H. We did keyhole, all weaves, everything. So it's very, very fun. Just nice, easy. So I... Johnny's like, what is that? Well, yeah, I feel like someone, (laughs) there's a new language being spoken that I am not familiar with. (laughs) What a keyhole? What it what so what's so the deal? So a keyhole would be you run down, you go around a pole and then you race back. Okay. Yeah. And so that's a big 4H thing. Yeah, yep. So okay. you spin that one other thing, are you spin 4H? Okay. Mm-hmm. And were you also in a teen talent show? I was. I was. So when I was younger, I think I can't remember 13 or 14. I did the talent show at the Freeborn County Fair. Shout out to Albert Lee. Yeah. Um, and then I won that. And then I went to, I got to sing at the teen talent show at the Minnesota State Fair on the kind of smaller stage there. So this is like you won regionals and you went to state and the state fair was I state? Did. yes. Did you, like, what, was there like a prize for someone who wins the whole thing? You know, I don't think so. Because obviously, I would have won if there was. <laughs> okay, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but because it was like multiple days, um, no, we didn't. We just, the prize, well, I was told, the prize was that you got to sing on the stage there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now there probably is a prize. But Yeah, no, we should. We'll ha- we're going to probably find an av- avenue. Well, we'll find an avenue here for you to oh, sing. Gosh. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then, okay. So the Super Bowl is coming up. Yep. And so you're a singer. Um, if you enjoy music, uh, Maroon Five is playing at the Super Bowl. But let's say you got to choose who plays. Who would you choose to play? So I would have. I've been thinking about this okay. for this last ten seconds here. Um, I would definitely say it has to be a country theme this year. One, I love country, but okay. two, I have this whole plan. So we would start with a little bit of Luke Bryan, get us going. Okay. Then Carrie Underwood would come out, obviously, because it's Carrie Underwood. I mean, you got to have Carrie Underwood there. <laughs> and then we'd throw it back a little bit. George Strait would come out, then Shania Twain, and then we'd end with Garth Brooks. So it's like a backward and, well, George Strait's yeah, even guess. older than Garth, but you're kind of doing the backward in time thing. Oh, yeah. So those, those well, Garth Brooks, I think, is, is touring again. Oh, yeah. I but, will be there. Okay. <laughs> is Shania back as well? She was, yeah, yeah. I was See, there. Yeah, well, you'll be there or you were there? I, wa- I was there. She was here, oh, gosh, last summer? The summer okay, before? Okay, okay. Yeah. But back when she was in her heyday, were you even born? Oh yeah, because that was well, like the ni- that was like eighties and the nineties. Yeah, so I was born in eighty eight. Yeah, and then I had all of her CDs. You did so, oh, yeah, yeah. She was pretty big. I mean, Garth oh, yeah. Brooks was huge. Mm-hmm. And then you said Luke Bryan. Luke Bryan. So that's the big deal right now. Well, you know, that's I enjoy Luke Bryan. I know there's yeah. like other things, but or what do other you mean? other country stars, but they're so, not as cool. Okay, because I'm not con- country, oh. but I appreciate no, I appreciate all music. So you've got was Jason Aldean. Oh, yeah, he's a good a big one, deal? too. Jason Aldean's good. So who have you seen, okay, concerts that you've been to, like, in the last two or three years? Who else, then? Oh, so you said all these country people. Any other country people are missing? Um, I went to Little Big Town last year. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. They were amazing. Okay. So they were very good, very good. Um, Shania Twain went to Garth Brooks. Okay. Because he was here a couple summers ago, too. But I'm going back to him. Okay. And then also this year I'm going to Backstreet Boys. It's not country, but I'll allow it. No. Yeah, of course, the Backstreet Boys. And th- who else? It's like, is it Boys to Men or NSYNC? Or, I think they're all coming back. Much, Maybe. Much to, yeah, <laughs> much to the detriment of modern society. Oh, golly. But um, no, that's, <laughs> you know, I at the time, I, I, I took my, at the time, 13-year-old, now 16-year-old, the One Direction. So. Oh, was it a good concert? In their eyes, it was. Yeah, in their <laughs> eyes, it was. But um, all right, so now stick. Well, this isn't a music theme, but it's still kind mm-hmm. of a celebrity theme. Oh yeah. You um, you can pick an actress who would star in the movie of your life. Mm-hmm. Who would that be? I'm gonna throw a loop here, and I'm not picking any actress. I'm picking Carrie Underwood. <laughs> Carrie, here we go. <laughs> we are just focused. On, okay. Well, you I, know what? I mean. She, Miley Cyrus can act. Um, yeah. You know, maybe she can act. And I if it know. was, you know, a story about my life, I feel like Carrie Underwood would just understand me. She would get it, and she would just be a <laughs> rock star as Jasmine. Okay. Did you um, did you say you saw her in concert? Not yet. She okay. comes this year as well, too. I think June. Okay. I got to look. But I've bought a lot of tickets lately. <laughs> okay. But she would understand you. Like, if you could just yes. have some time with her, yeah. she would completely understand you. She would. I feel like she'd really get me. Okay. She could portray me in any movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. All right. That's, well, now, basically, we know what's coming this summer in Eden Prairie Aquatics and in your kind of music <laughs> yes. social life. So, um, If we could get Carrie Underwood at the community center, I mean... Life would just be grand. It would be. You well, can work I don't on know. That. Well, I don't know if I'm going to work on it. You can work <laughs> on it because maybe when you run into her at the concert yes. and you explain to her that she's going to star in the movie of your oh, life right. and you don't get arrested <laughs> and she actually is cool with that, then she'll come to the community center Perfect. and we'll be in great shape. But until then, Jasmine, it's much appreciated to have you stopping in. Yes, thank you Thanks for, for the coming invite. In. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, if anyone um, wants to find you, they'll find you at the community center. They sure will. Right off the pool deck. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yep.